right or at least the government should have given corporate india some time maybe 5 years to uh, you know kind of migrate into this uh, provision now this is very important those of you have uh, a paid up capital of 10 crores or a turnover of 100 crores you need to constitute these committees the audit committee and the nomination and remuneration committee now this is very funny because it doesn't distinguish between a private limited company or anything so the moment your paid up capital exceeds 10 crores or moment your turnover has exceeded 100 crores you need to have an audit committee of directors you need to have a nomination committee now what does the audit committee obviously audit committee looks into aspects of financial reporting control risk management review of which uh, blow mechanism the compliances that are mandated for such companies is huge and i fail to understand why the government could not think of so i mean making it more relevant for companies with probably the top uh, 100 companies in terms of market cap or maybe the threshold limit could have been increased substantially because 100 crores is not large in size now what would a nomination committee do nomination committee would sit and decide the remuneration for the md the ceo it's your own company okay now these are the kind of additional compliances which have been uh, imposed on companies with the threshold limit of 100 uh, rupees 100 crore capital which will not make any sense so hopefully the government of the day would uh, you know we've talked to the ministry of corporate affairs all corporate india has been engaging with them to say that the limit may be enhanced to 500 or maybe even 1000 crores because that is where you need these kind of committees and not uh, not in companies which have a very uh, small threshold limit now whole time key managerial person now if you look at the threshold limit it's 5 crores it's ridiculous because if you have a paid up capital of 5 crores someone you you import a plant and machinery from some foreign country and some venture capitalist say that okay look you give me equity share capital or give me preference share capital and it reaches 5 crores i mean you need to have a whole time uh, key managerial personnel now who is this key managerial personnel is basically a person who is responsible if anything goes wrong under the company's act you violate the provisions of the companies act then this person will be held responsible and probably the entire board can call it so you need to have an md or a ceo or an, an absence a manager who can be appointed as a kmp a cfo who need not be you are basically your accountant who double up as a ca uh, as a cfo who need not be a director and a company secretary so the cost of compliance that is there is going is going to go up considerably so those of you who have paid up capital of your companies that you serve or own exceeds 5 crores i think so this is one important thing that you need to take into account now directors i mean you know it's 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 a classic situation uh, when i meet junior company secretaries you have these hindi films which bollywood always makes it look so easy you know mujhe board meeting mein jana hai mera 1 minute 1 lakh rupaya hai so on and so forth now i have the privilege of working with one of the finest boards in this country i mean the people who serve the board of sdfs here men of eminence who have given their life for this country in my meeting which happened on may 6th the chairman of the audit committee told mr parekh that the role duties responsibilities that have been cast on the board of directors is so onerous that we are basically line managers so if you look at the terms of reference if you you all should read section 177 of the companies act which lists down the terms of reference of the audit committee then if you are a listed entity there's something called clause 49 of the listing agreement which deals with corporate governance virtually the audit committee is equivalent to a ceo of a company for the first time i mean i have i have referred to the companies act in england and south africa and australia i have never seen government telling a director boss this is your duty because if you look at the provisions it's already there in addition to that if you look act in accordance with articles of association it's a given you don't have to tell me that promote the objects of the company obviously discharge duties with reasonable care diligence it's a given otherwise i would sack you not get involved in any situation which may conflict with the interests of the company i mean ye sab baatein jo hai i don't know why the government is teaching corporate and i mean why is why is corporate governance only for the listed entities and not for the public servants i have never understood it so this 166 is a put off those of you you all are not only successful businessmen but you all can also contribute immensely to other companies as directors please read one section 166 there are certain provisions in the companies act which are so onerous that they can you know you can be behind bars for no rhyme or reason 
some accountant or someone does a goof up and uh, there is some the oversight is not in place and you could get in trouble because <coughs> the magistrate you know what is important is now this is an event which is promoting knowledge i mean it's a very unique uh, initiative by yes bank but the magistrate in the lower courts have no clue there is no yes bank going and training the magistrates or the city civil courts they will just issue a non available warrant you know aap office mein jaate ho and suddenly you'll have a cop saying malum nahi hai company act mein tumne kuch locha kiya and you know they'll take you i'm sorry i'm using this language but this is the fear that is there someone as eminent as bansi mehta who is virtually walking god for many chartered accountants and company secretaries in this country he says that i am worried because you know we i gave him the terms of reference and i said that you please read it and the board is going to approve it he got so worried he's saying are you sure i said sir copy paste 177 copy paste clause 49 see it's it's that's where the responsibility comes as a businessman it is important for you not only to structure your business do tax uh, optimization as majithia sir rightly said it's not tax planning okay work with your chartered accountants to strategize on issues on service tax create the structures but compliance is also important because while your intentions are noble to maximize profits and grow your business and create employment in this country some small reason one danda you will give mca guy will come from the rest of companies and create an asset for you let me give you an example there's something called unclaimed dividends and deposits which need to be transferred to the government it's party time for them we have contributed close to 480 crores unclaimed deposits and unclaimed uh, uh, dividends and the government had the gall to the ministry of corporate affairs had the gall to send me a notice based on some research that was done by the cia where they got the figure wrong now this is the kind of compliance and enforcement that they are doing so we are in for trouble mr majithia and uh, my other senior colleague mentioned about the fear the harassment that is there unfortunately till companies act 1956 was there uh, uh, register of companies and ministry of corporate affairs was not a serious threat but today when i look at these provisions i think so you will have to devote some time every month looking at the companies act you can hire a practicing company secretary or even your chartered accountant should be good enough to you know help you on that but the duties as your director is onerous so those of you who are companies and those of you are directors please stand on guard please invest please work with your chartered accountants and you know lawyers and company secretaries to understand what the requirements are probably in terms of hours maybe one or two hours a month should be good enough and you know you can sail through but if you don't do that you could get into a lot of trouble now there are certain powers which in the opinion of the government should be done only at board meetings you can't set committees you know you can't delegate it to a ceo so you need to call these people and you know do it so it it all deals with selling and borrowing powers and you know investment in debentures and all those things now i talked about disclosures you know my printer i think so it was um, I, i think so we had tata press earlier they were very happy when the companies act was going to come because they knew that board disclosures on ml and mind you some of the disclosures uh, i don't know anyone from secretarial department from yes bank here the disclosures are so onerous anything and everything that a company does has to be disclosed whether it is remuneration policy whether it is csr policy whether it is risk management whether it is a compliance certification host of i think so there's a almost 50 to 60% jump in the number of pages that i see in all the annual reports in fact courier companies have complained saying that our courier boys are not able to even carry those annual reports and go around as a result of it the dis- the, the dispatches have been delayed what i'm trying to come to is that once you are a public company you cannot say that okay but is that same you know you save as the last year's files and do it there are a lot many things that are required to be done there are a lot many things there are a lot of talent that you have to bring in for example if you have a profit of 5 crores you need csr now i'm sure you all do a lot of charity work but the government is not listening to that government is saying no no you need to have a csr committee you need to have a csr policy then you need to disclose in the annual report now they have virtually outsourced their public responsibility abdicated is what the word i used now you need to have people you need to have an ngo who can tell you what csr is all about now for example risk management for example internal controls if you do not listen to your chartered accountant god help you compliance mechanisms you know it says that you need to the board needs to review compliance mechanisms if you do not take your professional colleague along 
my humble request to you is that you do what you want but don't treat your chartered accountant or your lawyer or your company secretary as you know tax return bharna hai ya service tax ka kuch locha ho gaya please come and talk to me no he is your partner if you want to grow and if you want to grow as a solid institution in your industry these are the in- institutions and individuals that you need to rely on they are, i think so they will do an, a fantastic job so what the companies act has done is it's just not about meeting ho gaya aap minutes bana do you outsource it to a company secretary or name lending those days are gone now it is an age of disclosures transparency partnership with professionals who will sail you through that is my humble message to this industry this is the another set of uh, disclosures you can imagine all the other important slides were just one and this is you know running into pages as far as accounts is concerned again there is if you read the provisions it is totally mistrust uh, it talks about inspection how you can review the accounts and you know all those things a uh, revision of financial statement this was something which was unheard of i mean we when i learned co- corporate law and when i would share my space with chartered accountants i never talked about uh, review of uh, financial statements as if uh, all the ills in the country are because of the chartered accountants you know i don't agree to that and this is something which when an outside investor reads it, it the impression that you get is oh you, there must be a lot of issues where a uh, revision of financial statements may be in order so it's it's something which it can come as a tool if genuinely if there is some you know hodgepodge that is happening but by and large i think so we are compliance conscious citizens auditors i mean this is something which upset me as an individual the institution of an auditor as i said has been tampered with i am not aware of the kind of deliberations the ici had with the government but i think so it's a big stab in the back uh there was no need for them to you don't have to change forms it's not about foreign forms and indian forms it's about the chartered accountant as a profession they should have held on to that they should have given about probably 5 to 10 years they should have negotiated they should have tried listen to the institute they have not done that so what are the requirements uh, if you have an individual auditor 5 years if it is a firm two terms of 5 years and after that 5 years you have to give him leave so what is 5 years in a country that is where the political leaders are saying that uh, you know we are going to make history we are going to be the number one economy in 2030 2030 is going to come in three uh, three five year cycles we are in 2014 so this is something which is not mandated it is cause a lot of confusion um, we trusted our chartered accountants we trust our auditors and i think so that is something which uh, the government should seriously review and do course the corporate social responsibility as i said is something which came out of the blue how the government is working is it will start with some voluntary guidelines so they had voluntary guidelines on business responsibility and they said that some companies can do csr so today hdfc has to earmark uh, 90 crores uh, average to 2 percent of average 3 years profits is 90 crores now we had we we used to spend about 15 crores a year average csr we had one individual who was taking care of it now 90 crores is something it's a six time quantum jump and believe it or not the amount of money that will flow into csr in india is 10000 crores now what is it for you all so many of these ngos will have to professionalize many of these ngos will have to be more transparent so many of these ngos will be section 25 companies so they will need printers that is where the business opportunity comes in plain and simple but when it comes to csr my question is i have mr deepak parekar the chairman rana kapoor is the ceo of yes bank and they are eminent people who have done a lot of on the csr space but bottom line is we need talent so the positive is that you will have uh, students from tiss and other charitable institutions coming and joining companies and you know the space will increase but what i also see is that lot of documentation lot of printing lot of uh, you know vouchers coming in lot of ngos chasing money lot of corporates throwing in money so that's where the uh, you know opportunity will come in so here you need to be very careful if your profit is more than 5 crores you need a csr committee that csr committee must have one independent director so you need to pile on one guy and uh, you need a csr policy and you need to put it on your website so these are the additional compliances that will come and play now uh, vikas mentioned to me that you all are concerned uh, about fraud i never imagined that fraud would be defined in the companies act uh 
in some of my interactions through my seniors with the ministry guys i asked them ki why have you defined fraud why is it something like instead of trading part of companies act when the other regulators looking at it this thing nahi nahi bahut kuch ho chuka hai you don't know the 2g scam the colgate scam and everything else but they represent a very minuscule section of our economy they are irrelevant and you all have done a good job in booking them and cbi is after them cag is after them the supreme court is monitoring these cases i mean if you look at the definition of the term fraud if i can read it any act omission concealment of any fact or abuse of position committed abuse of position committed now let's say you are a director but you have assigned the task to your elder brother who is doing everything and there is some employee who is who has done some gapla now you are assuming responsibility and if there are some documentation or emails that can be proved where in good faith you have signed off those documents you have said he sent an email he sent a long email with a big disclosure and you said okay please proceed because you trusted him you acted in good faith you know that you could be held guilty of fraud so this is something which is uncalled for it will open up a pandora's box you can be open to harassment you know prosecution i mean i don't think so corporate india deserved uh, these kind of provisions so fraud is something which is very very scary you all need to look at it very very closely in fact as printers my humble appeal to you is that you all also need to have employees who understand these provisions because if there is any omission material omission of any line in the prospectus or in the annual report the government is not going to say mera printer ne galti kiya they are going to say look you hit this from me this was material and accordingly this could be a fraud so the responsibility that comes not only comes within the organization but you as partners for the companies that you serve you know a mere material i mean when you do proofreading suddenly one line can just go somewhere one paragraph can just disappear and that could be material concealment in the opinion of sebi and ministry of corporate affairs and the companies could be held up okay thank you now investor rights i mean this is not relevant because you are all closely held companies but the government believes that investors have to be protected so those of who attend agms ashalata maheshwari is an investor she will talk about lot of shairies she will praise the shareholders there is jayesh manek and you know host of these guys government feels investor rights have to be protected it's a very noble uh, cause it's a very noble objective but what are the rights that the investors have today in case you change your prospectus you let's say you raising funds to import a plant and machinery and then suddenly you midway you say nay nay not plant and machinery i will use this money to make a film then those investors who have committed funds or who have invested funds have a right to revoke and say that i don't want to invest i need my money back this is something which is very uh, relevant and important exit opportunity if uh, there are dissenting shareholders uh, to a particular project then the dissenting shareholders can exit from the company and the promoters or the controlling shareholders are required to pay that price as per the valuation